Welcome to the 40th International Shuffleboard Association World Championship from the St. Petersburg Shuffleboard Club here in sunny St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm Stephanie Swain, President of the St. Petersburg Shuffleboard Club. And I'm Christine Page, Executive Director of the St. Petersburg Shuffleboard Club. And we are so happy to welcome you to the games this year. Uh, this year, we're actually doing something a little bit differently. We are going to be streaming every day, we're going to stream a game of the day. And the purpose of this show is to give you a little bit of insight into what's been happening at the tournament. So how does the International Shuffleboard Association World Championship work? What's been going on? Has there been any drama? We don't know. We'll talk about it later. So Christine, why don't you give us an overview of the tournament and what the players can expect while they're here? Well, sure. It is an entire week of games and also fun activities. So yesterday was the practice session and then in the evening there was a meet and greet. And you have to understand these are people from all over the world, basically, and they typically only see each other once a year or once every other year. So the meet and greet is a nice, relaxed way to really basically have a reunion with, with your shuffleboard friends, basically. This morning was the opening ceremonies, which we had the Parade of Nations and all the national anthems and the flags and everyone in their, their uniforms. And we were honored that Mayor Ken Welsh came and uh, council member Gina Driscoll came and made some remarks, as well as Visit St. Pete Clearwater's director, Brian Lomack. And then that was followed by three games today to start the tournament. Tomorrow is a full day of games. And then in the evening is Carnival on the Courts, and that is for the players, uh, the tournament sponsors, and also the boosters. And that is when we are turning the Shuffleboard Club basically into a carnival with shuffleboard-related carnival games. <laughs> then Wednesday and Thursday are both half days of play, and that is because the Shuffleboard Club, we play all outside. So if there happens to be rain, we needed a time to kind of make make that up so we have some space in the afternoon just in case. Friday is the semifinals in the morning, the finals at 1.30 p.m., and then the awards banquet. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Christine, I think we have some breaking news. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Oh, all right, after the banquet, it's the official after party at the club, and that is open to everyone. The public is invited. It is from 7 to 10 p.m. here at the club, and it will we'll have a glow-in-the-dark shuffleboard. We'll have a DJ and some other fun things planned. Nice. But yeah. That sounds like pretty, a really fun week for the It's a fun players. week. Oh, man. I wish, you know, we've both played in International yes. Shuffleboard Associations, and so we know how much fun it is to yeah. be around our, our shuffleboard friends and yes. family. Um, but so as much fun as it is, there is actually some serious shuffleboard to talk about mm -hmm. as well. So why don't I give you a breakdown of how the games are going to go. Mm -hmm. This tournament is set up in what's called a round robin pool system. And basically what that means is that we've broken up all of the players into multiple groups. So some shuffleboard players may be familiar with dumping chips into a pot and doing a draw yes. to figure out where you're going to play and who you're going to play against. With a bracket. With a bracket mm -hmm. system where mm -hmm. if you lose, you get knocked into a different bracket or out of the tournament completely. Right. That is not the case in this play. Right. So what the tournament directors, Glenn Monroe and John Cunningham, have done mm -hmm. is they've actually separated all of our players out in two separate groups. So we have 64 men and 36 women. In the men's groups, we have eight men's groups with eight men in each group. The women have six groups with six women in each group. Mm -hmm. So each person is going to play everybody in their group. And then at the end of the, the first round of group play, they'll get separated out again. Yeah. Yes. It's kind of like... So, right. Think of it as... I think of it as sieves. So you have your first group, and then the top winners will sort of be filtered out as the other players move down to their second group, sort of like in the next tier. And then by the end of the week, here's your top players and the rest the rest will be placed as they as they go. My mom would say the cream rises to the top. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good. I like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. So that is how we are gonna be playing the tournament this week. And I think our first few rounds are today and tomorrow and then and everybody will get separated out. But we will make sure that in the pregame show you guys are well aware of who's at the top and who's at the bottom going forward. Christine, I know we've got a bunch of world champions here, yes. but I was actually talking to the champion from 2019, mm -hmm. Mats Graf Wang, and he was very excited about playing. And I asked him 
if going into Vienna, if he had an idea that he might win. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, he hoped he would win. He wanted to be in the top 10, but he wasn't quite sure. As the week went on, he started feeling better and mm -hmm. better about it. But this week, he doesn't know. Right. So it's it's so it's so great. You never know who's going to take away the championship. And I can imagine he really wants to repeat the win. Yeah, I yeah. can imagine yeah. so, yeah. And I have to say that the women are very lucky because yes. the champion from 2019 is not here this mm -hmm. year. She, uh, Fabienne Fluch from Germany, actually had to stay home because she had finals and she's still in school. <laughs> and she's, she's missed, but probably not by all the women on the court. <laughs> So, so we have a lot of great players this week. Uh, some very, I'm going to use the term world-class mm -hmm. shuffleboarders. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think they all started off at that level. No, everyone starts off as a beginner. And we are going to show you a little bit about beginning shuffleboard and how to play. Our pregame show is brought to you by the Royal Palm Shuffleboard Club, both in Brooklyn and Chicago. Welcome everybody. My name is Jonathan from the Royal Palm Shuffleboard Club and I teach you the rules of how to play. So the idea of the game was to shoot tens and eights and sevens, right? Not here because that would be super easy. You gotta shoot them all the way down there. So that's a good seven, that's a good eight, but that is worth nothing. If it's even a little bit on the line, zero points. Gotta be completely into score. So we go back and forth, yellow, black, yellow, black. We don't actually score until all eight discs have been shot. So just because I score a 10, doesn't mean you can't knock me out, right? We just alternate who gets to go last, not based on who scored more or who scored last. We're just alternating. So whatever's left on the board at the end, that's what scores. Obviously an advantage to go last, nobody can knock you out if you go last, right? That last disc called the hammer. It's good to have the hammer. This area back here where it says 10 off, this is the kitchen, minus 10. You do not want to end up in the kitchen. This, still minus 10, that zero, that zero, back here zero, but anywhere inside this whole isosceles trapezoid, all minus tens. You're probably saying, what is this line even good for if it's not gonna save me from the kitchen? And the answer is, you can only shoot from your side of that line. If I'm yellow, I can shoot from anywhere inside this box. Can't cross over onto my opponent's side to shoot. You can shoot to the whole thing, but you have to shoot from your side. If you don't make it up to that second line right there, that's called the lag line, it just comes off the board. So if you wind up in that center area, just pull it off. When shooting, here's what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna rear back and smack at it because these things will break. So instead, always be in contact with the biscuit like this. Arm relaxed at your side, feet together, face forward. One hand, not two. Little step with the right, step and push with the left. So it's more of a pushing than a smacking. When moving the disc around, always use the back of the stick to move them like this. Don't try to move them around with the front of the stick like, because again, they'll break. The front of the stick should only be used for shooting. When standing, always stand butt side down, tip up, not the way around, because they'll break. And then finally, most importantly, the rule we never want to break, the most important rule we have, do not walk on courts. So you can walk anywhere in the black or anywhere in the sand, just never on the blue. So if there's a disc out there, don't just walk out and get it. Come around the side, grab with the back your stick, bring it to where you want it to go. Here at the International Shuffleboard Association 2023 World Championships, we're gonna be playing 16 frame non-walking singles. What that means is that I'm only playing against my opponent this way. The folks on the other side of the court are playing their own individual 16 frame match, and we're playing our 16 frame match. So we'll go back and forth, shoot them all down there. We'll put our score on the scoreboard and then we'll sit down. We'll wait for our court mates to shoot them back this way. But their scores don't have any effect on our scores. I'm only playing with the person next to me. This is my opponent. So that's a quick little synopsis on how to play shuffleboard and what we're gonna be doing here this week. And uh, good luck to all of the, uh, the players this week and uh, stay tuned for more tips on how to play shuffleboard, some strategy advice and uh, all the great action coming to you from, from St. Pete this week. Thank you, Jonathan. He always explained that really well. Yeah, he really does. He does. Okay, so Christine, we've got a couple of matches that we're gonna watch today. Mm -hmm. Do you wanna tell us about the first one? Sure, the first one is Torben Hoosman 
from Germany, who actually came in second in 2011 in Dieppe uh, when he was just about 16 or 17 years old. He's a young player, and he will be playing against Alan Rossetti, one of St. Petersburg's favorites. Oh, that's such, it's gonna be such a good game, it I can't is. wait. So Ashley Albert, also with Royal Palms, is out there right now with them. So why don't we go to Ashley and hear what they have to say about this before their game. Okay, I'm here with Alan Rossetti from the St. Pete Shuffleboard Club. Hi, Alan, how you feeling? I'm feeling very good, I'm feeling confident, and uh, we've got the place in great shape, so I think there should be some awesome play. Do you think you have an advantage? I know that you led the team in refinishing the courts. Did that give you an advantage? Um, I don't think it gave me that much of an advantage. Uh, the court that we're actually playing on isn't been used by anybody, so this is actually the first time mm -hmm. anything's been, anything has been played on this court. Really? But you have the keys to the shed with the, the uh, equipment, don't you? I do have the keys to the shed, but mm -hmm. that's where my integrity over years <laughs> and years of uh, service to the city and the fire department that Trust me, if I say I didn't practice, I didn't practice. I do. I trust you. You were the fire chief of St. Pete, I'm right? one of the uh, district chiefs. Saint That's Pete. pretty amazing. And now you're a shuffleboard champ. Shuffleboard extraordinaire. I huh. hope, I hope, does Torben get to hear this interview ahead of time so he can <laughs> uh, get a little scared maybe? Uh, we'll see. If we'll, we'll relay some messages. Is there something you want to <laughs> tell Torben ahead of time to let him know what he's in for? Well, my first thing I'll say is let's make it a great show. That's the most important thing, too. Secondly, I hope I beat you. <laughs> All right. I will pass that along. Good luck out there. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm here with Torben from Germany. Torben, how are you feeling? I'm feeling a bit nervous, but I'm very excited to be here. Uh, are you suffering jet lag? When did you get here from Germany? Oh, actually two weeks ago. So I settled in. Did you do that on purpose so that you would be ready for this match today? Sort of, yeah. Part of it was vacation, but I was uh, preparing for that tournament pretty heavily, yeah. Have you played Alan before? I think I have, yeah. And, and how many ISA tournaments have you played in? Uh, that would be my ninth one. Your ninth one? Yes. Wow, and you won very early on. Did you, did you win or you were a finalist? Uh, I was a finalist. That's what I meant, he was a finalist. He was yet. a finalist, that was almost yeah. like winning. Yeah, almost. How, how old were you back then? Uh, first one I was 11. When I was in the final, I think I was 16. In, in the regular tournament? Yeah, regular tournament. Re you were 11 and then you were 60. That's amazing. And how old are you now? I'm 28. Oh, you're just like, you're, you're grown up before our eyes, Torben. Sorry. Um, okay. Well, do you have any last words before you head out there? Um, no, as I said, I'm, I'm very excited to be here. St. Peter's by far the biggest and greatest club, uh, to play in. I'm just very excited to go out there and kick some butt. <laughs> okay. Well, great luck. We'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Do you want to talk about the second game? Oh, I'd love to. It's <laughs> it's two of my favorite people on the whole planet. So we have Pam Hill from the UK mm -hmm. and Doris Hankey from the US. It is going to be a great game. I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to see what those two ladies do. They've been playing shuffleboard for a while now, so yes, they have. You never know who's going to win in that in that matchup. Mm -hmm. So I think Ashley's with them too. Why don't we go see what they have to say with Ashley? All right, Ashley. I'm here with Pam Hill. Hi, Pam. How are you feeling? Hi. I'm very well. Yeah, are you? How, what number tournament is this? What number ISA? 13. 13. And of the 13, how was, what's the farthest you've gone? I came second 10 years ago right here. I was here. I was here for that match. You played Glenna Earl. It was a good match. Very bad. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have your eye on the prize? You're hoping for the Golden Tang this year? Why not? Why not? It's anybody's game and it's definitely your game. I hope so. Okay, well, we're looking forward to seeing the match. I'm looking forward to it. Great luck. Okay, I'm here with Doris Hankey. Doris, how are you feeling? Well, I, I'm hoping to do well today and hoping to have partners that are nice and, and congenial and I hope we can have a good time. And that's really the most important thing. I feel like playing you is always fun, in my experience. Do you remember when I helped you learn how? I do remember. You were, that was the first time you ever played shuffleboard and I think it was at which is here. It was here. Yeah, it was 10 years ago here. 10 years ago. And I helped you every shot, every shot. And I thought, she's going to beat me. <laughs> That's it. I was I a better, shark. I better start playing. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun. And I, I know it got you started. Yeah, it really did. And it's been an, it's been an incredible ride. And for you as well. Yeah. Okay, well, so are you feeling good about getting out there? Who knows what will happen, but you're going to have a good time either way. Yes, absolutely. Okay, it's so good to see you. Great luck. Glad to be here. 
Yeah. Still be here. I hope you'll be here for a long time. I hope so too. Okay, back to you. Thanks, Ashley. That was great. Good luck to all of our competitors today. And we'll be back tomorrow with another pregame show for day two of the World Championship. Mm -hmm. All right, bye guys. See you Thanks. later. Hello, Shuffle fans. I'm Ashley Albert from the Royal Palms. I am here with Jim Allen, Shuffleboard Royalty. How are you, Jim? I am so excited to be here at the St. Petersburg Shuffleboard Club as they honor the 100th year of the St. Pete Shuffleboard Club. This is yeah. wonderful. It's the, it's the 100 year anniversary uh, and it's an amazing time to be here. It's also the 40th annual ISA Championships. They've warmed up. We have a, quite a match for us today and uh, they're ready to go, I think. At the head, we've got Torben Hoosman from Germany. Yep. And Alan Rossetti, who plays here out of the St. Pete Shuffleboard Club. Okay, and they're both big, big uh, participants in their own clubs. Alan, I think he's the vice president. Is that is that right? Right of St. Pete. And he is uh, head of the maintenance department. He has, he's just Mr. Everything. He does the court maintenance. Wow. Uh, he's a very, very good player. Right. Do you think that I know that he refinished all the courts with a he led a team that refinished the courts? Do you think that he? picked this court on purpose. He sort of set up the thing and said, I think uh, court three will be the court for me. Alan would never. <laughs> no, he's a man of integrity. Alan, uh, I think that was strictly up to the media crew, which was a uh, good crew worked for them. And Torben coming out with a beautiful hide using Alan's St. Pete. Oh, Alan's uh, Both these Saint players Pete. will play a clear game. Okay. Uh, I, I know both these players are pretty good. And Allen on his first clear stuck, Corbin, he'll make you pay for it. Yeah, and that's the thing with this level of shuffleboard. You make a mistake and someone's going to be able to capitalize on it. Exactly. Now, Torben is trying to protect his seven. Mm -hmm. uh, I said the St. Pete pilot before, but I met that it was Allen's Tampa, which is actually a pretty hard shot. Now he's going to try to knock him out without yeah. letting Torben's this is a difficult stick. shot because the, the court drifts in. Mm. So it's it's hard not to hit the block. Woo! And that's just a But that's he did it. Wow. And shot. that is a perfect example of how familiar he is with the drift of the court because right. he knew it was safe to go along suicide alley. That's what we call the end of the To court. knock the disc out was a phenomenal shot. To knock it and stay in a seven is Incredibly unbelievable. Difficult. Yeah. Because you need the speed has to be just exactly right. Also beautiful by Torben. Now, this early in the match, there's no reason for Torben to try the miracle shot and get that seven. He, he did the right thing with the score. Right. And Alan's not even going to try to get it out. He's just going to try to add to the score, and he does. Wow. He does. Beautiful hammer. Uh, for those of you just joining in, the hammer is the very last shot of the game, the most important shot of the game. If you just clear the board and score your hammer, you can outplay uh, a much better player than yourself. Is that yeah, true? It's very true. There's two methods of playing. You'll hear us use the term play the board, mm -hmm. somebody who just wants to keep inside the triangle all the time, or a clear player who puts up a block, clear, block, clear, and tries to score the hammer. Okay, let's see what we're doing over here. We've got Doris Hankey on this side playing with Pam Hill, both incredible shuffleboard players. Yeah, and let's see. I see Doris, Doris right She's off the bat, the play the board. Yeah, right. And yes. Pam missed. That's which a is rare pretty, miss. Pretty gut, yeah, pretty gutsy of Doris, and that's also going to get Pam's head because she doesn't miss a ton. Okay, knock yourself out a little bit there. Yeah, I think she was trying to block and it came yeah. up a little strong. Yeah. Uh, so the players warmed up before we tuned in and uh, got a feeling for the speed, but. Yeah, they did the, uh, each one gets two for speed. Mm -hmm. And then they get a four and four. So they actually get 10 different opportunities to see how the court drifts, how the display. But it's still, no matter how much you think you've got it, once you're playing for real, sometimes, for me at least, that all goes out the window. And in the ISA, different to other organizations, there's no what they call charting. 
you're not allowed to write that information down. You ah. have to keep that in your head. Got it. And so wh why do you think that is? Why isn't it allowed? It's because of the fact that you've got other countries coming. The ho they don't have time to chart 48 courts. Oh, I see. So right. it would give an unfair advantage to a St. Pete member. Okay. Now, Doris just gave Pam a seven, and she's got the hammer, so she's got a chance to move up here in a way that's going to be tough for Doris oh, she, to start. She does. And she's such a good player, she is going to make you pay for any little mistake. Yeah. And it was early enough in the game that she didn't let that initial miss get in her head. Staying calm and cool and collected. Both these women have been playing for decades. I think Doris hankey has been playing for 35 years. And their experience is going to show. Yeah. And you alternate who starts. A lot of people think it goes by the score. That's not true. It just goes by, as Torben started that first match, the first frame, Allen now will start. And that's so that they have equal number of hammers. Yes. Since that's the most there, important match. There's a rare mistake by Torben. By he tried to clear, but he stuck. Right, so he left uh, a St. Pete pilot for Allen to hide behind. Let's see if he can do it. Short. Oh it's, no! It is, is a it high eight, it so it's not. Well, let's see how we do. A high eight is hard to stick on and score. We might just try to clear it. No, Torben he's will try to step. kitchen this. Torben will try to kitchen uh, it because if he does, he's got two blocks. Got it. Right. Now he's actually given Allen if he can get back there another chance to hide. Pretty good. Allen has two options. He can try to score, or he can just remove the yellow disc so that Torben can't bump it. That probably, uh, probably will be his play. At least, see, well, he blocks just blocking it. it. Uh huh. Which giving him him right. a chance to hide. See, Torben next has time. the hammer. If if Allen can make it to zero zero, that's called stealing the hammer. Right. Yeah, I'm good at stealing the hammer. They call me the hammer burglar. The hammer burglar. <laughs> Does McDonald's know you uh, have yeah. that name? Yeah, trademark. And what they say is if you can't see it, you can't get it. Right, so. Now look at this shot. Oh. This this is a double. Oh my gosh, that is And that is why Torven is a past German champion. Yeah. And a finalist in two different ISA events. It's and shots like that that do it. And he was, when he won, he was very young, wasn't he? When he, when he first started playing? He first started playing, Torben was 12 years old, yes. Wow. Yeah. So not only does he have eight on the board, but he has a chance to really tack it on here with his yeah, hammer. Yeah, this is a hammer, so nobody to count on but himself here. Let's see if he can do it. Alan's done a nice job of blocking up the board there. Wow, beautiful, beautiful shot. Notice how he used Alan's disc to be safe. Yeah, like instead of right, trying to get around it, which might have uh, or, hit him Or in. go on the other side, which would hit his disc, mm -hmm. potentially knock his good eight out, so. Yeah, that it, it also is. requires a lot of confidence, though, because you think, oh, I don't want to hit his in. Yeah, and, and Torben is a shot maker, so. The interesting part about that is many times I'll study, will they try A or B? And Torben, on his shot, tried C, which I had not considered. Ah, <laughs> what did you think he was going to do? Well, the, the shot prior when he made that miraculous shot, yeah. I thought he would just block. Just, oh, okay. Just protect. Mm -hmm. Once again, the, the, the players seem to be having difficulty clearing. They're sticky. Well, this is neither. Oh no, this is Allen's home home club, but it's not anyone. Is it Pam's home club as well? No, Pam plays out of Clearwater. Okay, so they've only had a day or two to get the feel for the courts, and every court is different. Uh, every club has a different speed that you've really got to get a handle on in order to control your disc. Absolutely. Doris plays out of Hawthorne, which is in Central Florida. Okay. Up, she's going to go up Suicide Alley. Well, she's going to try oh, to get behind go those around. two. Oh, uh -huh. it, it's Ooh. well protected if she can make that. That's a beautiful. very good shot. That's a beautiful shot. She and probably it. wanted it a little more to the right yeah. because not only can Pam see it, but. She might be able to tip it into the kitchen. 
But that court drift to the left. And oh, look, how, look how she wow. played that drift perfect. Wow. <gasps> what a shot. Doris still has two discs. She can this get herself one, out of this. Yeah, but this it's is rough. one where you just keep trading great shots. Oh, amazing. Oh, and that, okay. That's when she gets what they call the roll. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it evened it out. And sometimes you get kitchen blinders on. You just want to get out of the kitchen. The kitchen, by the way, is at the very bottom of the court. It's worth 10 off. So you want to stay out of the kitchen. But sometimes you're in the kitchen, you can't get out. Just score, try to minimize the damage. Right now, she's got a minus three. And she's not trying to get herself out. She's just trying to minimize the damage. Too oh. strong. Too strong. Three, yellow. <laughs> so the way you would she's score that is, she got a three plus off. seven. Three off. Three she was off. in the yellow. kitchen for 10 off, so she's three off. Right, she's down three now. Still early though, it's anybody's game. Corbin starts, and he set up his St. Pete, and Allen mm. misses. Once so he, just, just for those at home who don't know, a, there are two pilots, that's what they're called, because they're usually the first disc someone sends out. A St. Pete is on the opposite side of you, and a Tampa is on your side. That's correct. And uh, Tampa is normally a little closer to the triangle point. Yeah, but the whole point is to set yourself up to hide behind it, Torben didn't quite get there. Now he's got another shot. He's gonna try to clear that hide to make sure he doesn't get into trouble with Torben. Because once there's a good hide, that's gonna cost you two discs to get rid of it. Up. Torben has to at least touch that line. If it, if any disc touches or crosses it, it stays, but if he doesn't touch that line, that disc has to be removed. Yeah, it's called the lag line. And in that instance, uh, we're, they're playing as court partners. So Doris would come and remove that. Yes. Now this is an interesting shot for Torvin. Allen has the hammer, mm -hmm. but he has the opportunity to bump this one. And get a double. And, and, and go on the offensive, usually, when, the other person has a hammer, you're on the defensive. Mm -hmm. Oh, And he got wow. the perfect double. Incredible. What a shot. Allen's not going to try to get them both. He's just trying to tip him in. And he gets a point, but not a really good play by Allen. Yeah. Still early in the match. You don't want to. Just minimize the damage. Yeah, minim keep, keep the damage to a minimal. Now, have you played every single player that's playing here today? Are you watching Pam? Have you played Pam and yeah. Doris and I, Alan I've played and everybody. Torben? Oh, yeah. Have you beat any of them? <laughs> that's the real question. I've played a lot of doubles in St. Pete, and Alan uh, played a lot of doubles. In you played with Allen or against Allen? No, against Allen. Against Allen. He's a good player. I love that Doris doesn't really hesitate before she makes her shot. She just gets right in there. She knows what she wants to do, and she just gets in and does it. She doesn't set it up. She just goes for it. You know, she's got 35 years of experience. She, she knows doesn't, what to do. And she leans on every 35, each of those years. <laughs> she's 91 years old, still playing like a young chippy. And she plays um, at Hawthorne, as we mentioned, as her home course, but she also, in the summertime, plays a lot up in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina, Hendersonville, North Carolina. I went to summer camp for eight years in Hendersonville, North you Carolina. You would know it well. And you just moved to, we to just North moved Carolina. We just moved very close to it. In fact, I played a tournament last month, and Doris was there. Um, are the courts different? Is the speed different on the courts in, in North the courts, Carolina? The courts are a little different. They are, um, <gasps> oh. oh. Well, that was a, Lucky. That, that was a close. The courts in North Carolina are very nice. They uh, just painted them blue, which oh. is an interesting uh, color for, for shuffleboard, but it works there. 
and they are embedded beads, whereas these, they sprinkle beads on here. Oh, they, got it. They have the embedded bead cord. You know, when we were designing the Royal Palms, we didn't go with green cords because we wanted people to be flirty, and we thought, oh, nobody's going to look good with green on their face. And so I picked, like, a light blue just based on a Vespa that I saw, and now all of the new clubs are using my blue as their cord. New they don't know color. that green's actually a traditional color of the cords, or red is the other color that's traditionally used. Well, Pam came up short on her hammer, so that's that was a no score on that frame. And we don't know, I don't have a score for, for Doris and Pam. Oh, five each. Okay, so it's negative three for Doris and five for Pam. We're back to Torben and Allen, who have 31 and 21, respectively, you think? Alan can use this. It's a little close to the a little close to the point. He's gonna try to get behind it if he can, go pretty deep. That's a, an incredible shot right shot. there. He missed that yellow disc by about an eighth of an inch. Wow. Up. Oh. oh no. Oh. And that's actually his strategy. They, they, they call that shoot the hostage. Oh. You, you take out the block and you make the person use another disc because so maybe you block. don't. Right. Now, because Alan's first block was so good, he wanted to clear it. Now, this block is so good, he'll want to clear it. Right. And he's got two discs so he can take that chance and get rid of it now. So he's got somewhere to go for his hammer. And he's also locked up the court for Allen by putting that disc in, in the, on the point. Of the now, Allen, he's going to want to block. He's got a good eight, a good seven. He's going to want to protect it. Uh-huh, which he does. He hits the lag line and goes past it, so he doesn't now, lose that disc. Torben has an interesting shot because the court has been going toward the clubhouse mm -hmm. to Torben's left, so he might be able to go down that side, bring Let's it in. in. His other strategy would be just to score an eight in front of it. Okay, let's see. Well, let's see, is he gonna take this drift? It looks like he is. It looks like he's gonna try to take advantage of the drift and get to Allen. Oh, 31, 21, Torben. Torben. Has, a, has a 10 point lead with the hammer. Oh, he just changed his strategy. Is he gonna bump? What do you think he's gonna do here? He's gonna try to go around the outside, take advantage of that open. Oh, he gets it. Scored an eight on the other side. Now, Kept his lead. His, his problem was if he knocks the black disc out, Alan's disc out, he would be on the line. Right, because it was too high up for him right. to stick there. Now, by scoring the eight, Alan does get the seven. But that one point many times comes it's back to be the difference, difference in a win or a loss. Yeah. And, you know, we may look back at this after the frame's over and say that, that one point, point was huge. And he would have, you know, really shortened his lead there instead of maintaining it with his hammer. Okay. Pam got. goes out with a 10. Doris not messing around on that. She's just going to clear that. She's got some work to do to make up. Pam is shooting and she currently has a 15 to minus 3 lead. Up. Oh, is she going to hit the lag line? No. So Alan has to come and clear that for her. It's like losing a turn, really. You know what I call that disc? Hmm. I call that a Fred Dirk. <laughs> you know why? why? No, why? That's a limp biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. 
I won't bore you with all my Oh, code, I do. I want I them all. I want them, them all. <laughs> okay, that's on the line. Pam's still going to probably clear it. Or she gonna, you think she's going to try to get that in the kitchen? Try to that one. And she doesn't do it. Almost. But Pam is such a strategy player. Not only did she want to clear, but she wants to hit it on the left so that she blocked doors. Ah, and she did. She'd get the roll to that left and block that side. And that's the kind of expert playing that really separates. You know, time just makes such a difference here. They say it takes four years to really get the hang of shuffleboard. Do you think that's true? I think it takes 10 minutes to learn the game of shuffleboard in a lifetime to learn it. Yeah, really to, learn to, it. Really, to, to know to really the ins master. and outs. Yeah. Right. But they say that it's 15% skill and 85% strategy. Oh, okay, that was lucky. Didn't get a hammer, but didn't get a kitchen. So score stays the same, negative three to 15, no dice. And Pam is happy with that result. Sure. If, you've, if the other person has the hammer and it's a tie, mm -hmm. you're happy. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just want to hold your opponent off. She can keep that lead the whole game. She's in business. So this would be the fifth frame. And okay. when they get to eight, they're going to switch colors. That's correct. So the entire time they're watching both players on the other side to get a sense of the speed of the discs so that they know what it's going to be like when they switch. To switch. Alan's been having trouble on that first disc getting that clear and getting his disc off the board, his own disc because now Torben is going to try to get behind it. Wow, really just making beautiful shots. Torben is making shot after shot, yeah. and uh, Allen's playing very well just to stay within striking. Oh, close, yeah. Scores 39 to 28. Torben in the lead. What's Allen going to do here? You could try to go down that side, but the, Ooh. the court goes inside. The advantage of trying that shot is, even if you don't get it, you take out the block. Now, right. Torben has got to use a disc up to block it. And, and maybe, you know, he doesn't block it. It happens. Well, right now, he's able to play defensively because he's got the lead. He's just going to try to keep Allen from scoring. Even if he lost that disc, as long as he steals Allen's hammer, he's going to stay ahead. Ooh, tough miss. Once, once again, he did the right thing by clearing the block. Make Torben use a disc where he can't score it, but he can maybe come up with a mistake. Now, Torben's right. not making many mistakes. So Allen's not going to try to get this disc out at this point. He's just going to score, minimize the damage. He doesn't want to waste a disc. I think too early in this game, he wants to try for an eight yep. on the other side. Once again, that one point might make a difference later on. Uh, that's exactly there you go. That's got, what he's, he's supposed to eight. do. Yeah. Got that one point Torben's back. Torben's quite happy with that result. Sure. I mean, just scoring your opponent's hammer is, can help you win the game for sure. And, yeah, just, uh, oh. Okay, 46-36 is the score. 10 point game. And we're still negative three and 15 for Pam and Doris. So this is the fifth frame for Pam and Doris. Oh, almost kitchened herself on that first shot. None of these players are playing it safe. They're not just doing a standard, you know, clearing game. They're really playing the board for better or worse. These, these two girls, yes, absolutely. Okay. Every time I've seen Doris play, wow. she is definitely a board player. Yeah. She likes to play the board, and she'll play a kitchen game, and when her kitchen game is on, she can't be beat. The thing with Doris is she actually really has fun when she plays. She really enjoys the game in a way that, you know, some people, it's a bloodthirsty sport, and she's able to, <laughs> she's able to draw blood and have fun at the same time. 
Okay. The worst this year. Oh, 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 oh. Look, oh. look out, look out. That's rough. Doris put herself in the kitchen. And We've got two she's got a block. Good sevens, a block of yellow, and a kitchen for the yellow. Pam's gonna Pam try to block the there. Hammer. She is really going for the jugular here. Wow, is she gonna try a double? <gasps> Took away her score. But see how she tried to roll to block her good seven. Mm -hmm. She tries to hit it and block hers. Okay, Doris is gonna try to get herself out. Oh, doesn't do it. And gives Pam the point. Oh boy, this is the kind that's of play that's tough to come back from. Yeah, not impossible, but it's a little bleak. And you start getting in her head at that point. Although again, if anybody can get out of her head and really just enjoy the game, it's Doris, so. Doris has a big honor this week too. She is going into the ISA Hall of Fame. Really? Six people will go in the ISA Hall of Fame. And Doris Hankey wow. is a, uh, one of those six and well, well deserved. Well deserved. 35 years. She's 91 years old. How many people go into any Hall of Fame at 91 years old? And we talk about how many ISAs she's played on, which is significant. But Doris also has been an integral part of what we call inaugurals, which we try to encourage clubs overseas to build clubs. Uh, uh -huh. she's, she's been in Norway, she's been in England, she's been to Austria, she's been in Germany. She's promoted this board all she, the place. She comes to the Royal Palms and people want her autograph. She's an incredible ambassador of the I sport. Want her <laughs> you don't have her autograph yet? 35 years, you gotta, get, you gotta get on that. She's a Hall of Famer now. She's also a cancer survivor. Three years ago she had cancer. She's back out at playing. She is that's a Spark Club. Spark Club? Spark Club. Got a 10 point lead here. He's going really hard for the clear game. If you notice, he's he's got his hammer, and if he can use his hammer to score, yeah. he'll have what they call a three disc advantage. That is uh, very, very strong. So he's not gonna give Allen any chances to come back from that. He's just gonna right. knock all his discs out, keep he's it not, off the board, he's not, not thinking leave room about, for mistakes. He's not thinking about putting Allen in the kitchen because maybe nope. if he doesn't hit him, maybe he gives him a seven. Right, or gets himself in the kitchen. So he's gonna just, oh, and Allen, Allen lands a 10. Lands a 10. Which it, is dangerous, right? You can, that's an easy kitchen if you hit it right. It is. Allen probably wanted it about six inches closer to the point because mm -hmm. there's still room for, if Torben knocks that out, there's still room for a disc, which is six inches in diameter, to score his own. He's checking, he's allowed to come down and uh. check and see if there's enough room. If, if he feels there's five inches, then he'll just clear it all hard. Got it. If he thinks there's six and a half to seven, eight inches, he's got the touch and the ability to knock wow. that black out and stick his in the tent. And you think that that's what he's gonna do here, if there's enough room? I don't think he would come down and check it. If he didn't think if he, he didn't, could handle it. He, he, he wasn't oh, using out. the drift. Oh, 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 wow. Okay, didn't score, but kept. But he did what he had to do, scoring. which is not get it out of the scoring zone. But again, Allen stole his hammer. He wasn't able to increase his lead. Yeah, with a 10, Allen would be down 10 points next frame. If he scores his hammer, it's virtually a tie game. Oh yeah, if he had kept that 10, it would be a tie. It's 46 to 36, so. All right, now, Doris has got to turn it on here. Doris will start going into a total kitchen mode. Okay, she's just gonna really go for the jugular. Right. Pam, cool, calm and collected. Pam is gonna not score deep. If, she, if she's gonna try to kitchen, she wants it up high. Uh -huh. She wants to make it as hard as possible. But will Doris Kitchen here, you, do you think she'll take this hide? Well, if the court drifts left, I don't think she can use that hide. Uh, so uh, it'll just drift right back to the line. Oh, no. <gasps> okay, now, no Pam, score. You, you mentioned earlier the St. Pete and the Tampa. Yeah. That's a really good Tampa, that black disc. It's on her, her own side of the court and at the top of the point. Now, Pam will try to get around that. Yep. Court drifts hard. That was... Well executed, but just needed a little more speed. a little more gas. Now Doris is gonna just clear some blocks. 
She's got the hammer. She's going to use it. I think she wants to just maybe bump that black dress. Yep. And she does. One black. Okay, now, can Doors kitchen this? Doors has got kitchen on the mind. Speed. <gasps> Woo! Let's see. It's closed. They're checking it. One black in the kitchen. Okay. She did it. She had it in her mind, and now she has it on the courts. Now, Pam obviously will try to get that her own kitchen out. Right. It's wide open. She doesn't People have to think fight that's an easy blocks. shot. It is not. No, she doesn't. Because your distance, your shooting many times can stay in the kitchen. Yeah. You knock the one out. Yeah, if you if you you know if you hit it straight on, it'll stick. You gotta hit it from the side. Oh, and then that is a rare mistake. That is a rough, rough. She still had kitchen on the mind, I guess. Ah, oh, you hate to see that. And that's the thing, you know, shuffleboard. A lot of times it's a psychological game. You get in there, you start getting in your head, you start to feel desperate, you make mistakes. Torpen is going to start off, and he is going to continue with the St. Pete. Now, I've noticed that his St. Pete's are going more and more to the center because the court drifts, and he, and he just is using more of the court. And they say that the first person to figure out the drift will win because it's you know, such a vital part of the game. Once you get the trick, you can take advantage. And so now he's hitting that, that same beat exactly where he wants it. Yep. Alan's just gonna try to clear that. Alan is being right back into the match at 46. He's down 46 to 36. Yeah. He, he just, just wants to score this hammer. Just clear, get everything away, and then score that last disc. Can push ahead, at least tie it up. See, there he did a great job because none of the disc Torben you can use. Right, this is it. Torben's got to score something or just block up the floor to keep Allen from scoring. A lot okay. of people try for what they call the high eight. Mm -hmm. That's just over the line. Now, if Allen we clear that Allen does his step. Right. But he's going to try to score here. Does he get there? He does oh, not. That's a shame. Still, he's only one disc behind. Yep. A lot, right. of, a lot of frames to go. That's true. And it's very possible that Doris is going to turn it around once they switch colors. Sometimes you got to just shake it off. She can still come back, but it's it's uh it's not looking good. You know, I've always had the mentality: if the other person can do it in that much in the half, why can't I do it in the half? Yeah, I love it. Also, you know, Doris last year was the captain of a U.S. team that won the gold medal with three Royal Palms players under her wing. So she's a great captain, always super positive. And she would tell her players, you've still got a chance here. The problem that she has is Pam is such an established player. She's not going to give her a lot of opportunities. She's going to clear. She's going to keep the disc off. Yep. Oh. <gasps> but she misses and gives her the opportunity. OK, here's an opening for Doris. Once again, that drift to the left causing some misses. You know, at the end, this. She wants to block that, but at the end, it's going to go left. Oh, OK. Leaves it open a little bit. Now Pam can stick and get rid of both these discs if she hits it right. Put a little more pace on it that time, okay. which takes a little of that drift out. Mm -hmm. And Pam's got the hammer, so she can get rid of one and come back and get the other. Nice. Doris is going to block this time. Well, Pam's thinking about going down that right side Trying because the court goes to the left. Uh -oh. But with this no. lead, I think she's better off just to shoot the hostage. Take that block out. Yeah. Make Doris make it again. And with her last one, she's just going to try to get she in wants there. To block yeah. She probably didn't want it that deep. No. Because Pam was a good, strong 
Hayes could get both of those. And stick, because it's not too high. Oh. She's going oh. to the kitchen. Ooh, okay. Well, that's a, gave Doris a little something. For, for Doris, yes. She's good back frame. in the she's back in the red, the black. No, she's not even. She's she's down 23 points. She's still in the. Which one is it? Is the red the good one or the black the good one? No, when you're money, in the red, the red is the bad one. Okay, she's still in the red. She's still in the red. The negative. Yeah. Yeah. And she's keeping an eye on that scoreboard. We call that the silent captain. Every time you play, every time you get up to play, you take a look at where you're at and decide what to do. And it can change your strategy, especially those last two, three, four frames. Yeah. You can change your whole strategy. If you're behind, you want to have this on the board. Right. If you're way ahead, like 12 is, or what 12 is only up 10 right now. But if you're ahead, you probably are going to go more into clear mode. Right, just keep them from scoring. But it's still too early with a whole nine frames yet to go. But both of these players, Torben and Allen, are doing a much better job of clearing than they did at the beginning. They're starting to get a hang of it. And just as they get the hang of it, they'll switch colors. Right, but they're learning the drift. And, and you mentioned earlier, you're watching the drift of your opponent's side because you're going to play that for eight frames when they switch colors. Yeah. And you want to see how his disc are doing. And you're also watching the people on the other side of the court just to get a sense of how fast each disc is because some of them are go faster than others. And we had we talked about this earlier. You said you like to use the fast discs. You like to use the slow discs to clear. Well, the discs are marked little dots on them. One, two, three, and four. And uh, players of this caliber here can see a, a disc one, maybe one pushes a little easier, what they call a faster disc. One you have to push a little harder, a slower disc. I was taught that to use your slower disc to clear because you're just going to be shooting hard anyway. Ah. And then use the finesse disc for your hammer shot. Got it. And I think for me, I know that if I have a fast disc, I have less control. I just want to waste that one and get it out of the way, go fast. And then when I have the slow disc, I feel like I got a sense of where it's going to land. Where it's going to land. Okay. Torben's Alan's got, got the hammer. Allen did not score. His no. came on the line. So Torben just has an open side. Just. Just All drop he something wants to in. do is drop a something. nice eight on that side or seven. And he does. He got it. Now he's more say, than one score ahead. Why don't you try for an eight in that situation? He's up. Look at the area, the size of a seven mm -hmm. versus the size of an eight. Right. The percentages are for you to score a seven. Yeah, you might as well aim for the eight and be happy with the seven. They say that the 10 is a sucker bet. You only take it when you need it, right? Because right. it's so small. Right. Okay. Now Doris has got to be feeling, for as cool as Doris is, she's got to be feeling a little shaky right now. She's got to really come on. And Pam's just going to keep on the pressure. The thing is, this is the very first game of a very long week of matches. So even if the, uh, whoever loses today could still take the whole thing if Absolutely. no one wins in a full, you know, full streak. But it's nice to walk out with a W. Yeah, Pam's doing that Tampa, and she's she switched over to Tampa now because that court is going in. It's, Doors can't get behind it because it, the, the, the drip brings it back to the line. Mm -hmm. I call it the Johnny Cash shot. <laughs> How come? Because it's on the line. That disc is walking the line <laughs> the whole time. Well, I feel like we should have a whole, you know, Allen Art Dictionary. Oh, okay. She gave herself. She tried she to split. Seven. She accomplished one goal, which is to get the yeah. one in. And she's using Pam's own disc as a block. Pam is uh, keeping the block and did not grab. Okay. Good job, 
The door sees a little opening here, and she knows she needs to take it. Wow, and she's going to make that? Shot. Beautiful, beautiful. And kudos to Doris for keeping her cool and not giving up. Okay, Pam's going to really try to do something here. This Nothing is get a, it done. This okay. is a huge shot here for Doris. Yeah. She's got really 15 big. points on the board plus a hammer shot to count. Okay. Twenty-one yellow. All right. Twenty-three, I believe. Twenty-one yellow, I think. Oh, 23. Okay. Keep me, in, keep me in line, Doris. Now, now she's in the black. I call that a DNA frame. You know why? <laughs> why? 23 and me. <laughs> you just you know, tell me when to stop. I know. Yeah. I'm never, I'm never going to tell you to stop. Never stop, Jim. Never stop. Meanwhile, my mom just was on 23 and me and found out that she has a half sister. Scandalous. There's breaking news right I there. I know. It was wild. She was like, oh, I just became so much more interesting. While we're on 23, we actually did. Oh, they're going to switch colors now. We actually did a DNA test on our dog. Oh, yeah. So I've yes, done that. So, yes, you can do that. Yes. And did you? what did you find out? He is 52% golden, 37% <laughs> spaniel. 11% Dotson. Wow, Dotson? <laughs> That's a hilarious mix. Well, we're at the halfway point. It's a 16 frame. Yep. So now the players will switch colors. Allen will play the yellow. Torben will be the black. And they will get their setup, their, their practice, because the disc would, could play different. Right. And the, and the, the, drift. the drift would be different. Sure. So you get a chance to acclimate yourself. And Pam. Oh, while we're here, we're going to do some shout outs while we're doing this setup here. So apparently, there have been some incredibly generous people who have paid $100 to sponsor a shout out uh, to the people uh, that they love, I guess. So I'm going I'm to do the first one. It's from Eric Papa. Longtime Royal Palms shuffleboard player on a winning team called the SPF 45s. Uh, he says, Shuffleboard is life. Gratitude and love to the Papa Kiefer families. Special thanks to Hefe and the Royal Palms Brooklyn crew, Adam Fertino and the New York Shuffleboard Association. Much love to the OGs, the SPF 45s. As a diehard Ted Lasso fan, I appreciate the shuffleboard is life. Shuffleboard is life. Ted Lasso, the player says, football is life. <laughs> and Eric means it too. He's a captain. He takes it really seriously, sometimes a little too seriously. He's come to fisticuffs when he uh, trying to make his team practice and take it seriously, more seriously than they do sometimes. Another shout out is from Rich Rome. Rich Rome is a St. Pete club player. Just an, an amazing man. Had a, two knees and I think a one hip replaced within the last three years. I thought you were gonna say he has two knees. I was like, that's not so amazing. They're Everybody's new, got two knees. knees. He is an avid bicyclist. Even though he had two knees replaced within the last year, I heard he just did a 22 mile ride. Wow, wow. My two knees can't do that. Neither one of my knees can do that. Rich is an incredible. He wants to give a shout out to the 10 off of the St. Pete Club. That's one of the league clubs, uh, league, league teams okay. here. He plays on them. He says they are a great group of people and some very fine shufflers, including Rich himself. I like that. I like that. He paid $100 to compliment the, some other players. I love that. So many incredible people help make this possible. Um, let's see some of the producers. Kenneth J. Buckwalter II. Uh, he's the St. Pete member, too. Who else have we got? The St. Pete Shuffleboard Club. You can't, say, you can't say enough about what the St. Pete Shuffleboard Club not only means to this event, but to the sport and the history of the sport. They are just 
monumental. It is a majestic place. It's really, you know, my business partner, Jonathan Schnapp and I came down here and visited uh, and fell in love with the place. And that's where we came up with the idea for the Royal Palms. And we started building it in 2012. In 2013, we played in our first ISA World Championship, which is 10 years ago. And now we're at the 100 year anniversary of the club, the world's largest shuffleboard club. Currently, 2,700 members. Wow, that is incredible. And how many courts, do you know? 76 courts total. And on Friday nights, they have a free uh, shuffle that they can have people come and they teach them how to play. And anybody can go, it's pretty incredible. If you're down in St. Peter, you live here, be sure to stop by. It is so beautiful at night. They have all the lights, yeah. the little twinkly lights are going, and you see the family if they have the music going. It is a very big gem of the city. Yeah, it's and just magical. I think it's interesting and exciting that the city now recognizes what an asset this club is. Yeah. Uh, even the opening ceremony today, you had uh, the mayor speaking, you had the, the council people. Yeah. They, they recognize, it. you know, this is an international event and, and being broadcast all over the world. Okay, we're almost done with our setups here. Also, probably worth mentioning, Christine Page, who runs the St. Pete Shuffleboard Club. She is a dynamo, and she really helped put this entire event on. Yeah, it, you know, when you talk about the turnaround of the St. Pete Shuffleboard Club, the first name that comes to your mind is Christine Page, yeah. the executive director. There's a lot of people before her and after her and during her, but she would be, most people call, would say she's the catalyst Absolutely. of all this success of the club. Had she not invited us to come down and play, the Royal Palms would not exist. She is directly responsible and for you the know, Royal that, Palms. That's one seed that she planted, which now grows into Brooklyn, into Chicago. Yeah. It grows all over. But uh, Germany, when Germany, uh, who never, there was no shuffleboard in 2006, there was no shuffleboard basically in Europe. 2006, Jeter Hoosman vacationed in Turkey and played at a resort. In Turkey? In Turkey. So he Googled shuffleboard in Europe. Next thing you know, he contacts uh, us and we, and we he, he wants to see St. Petersburg. So he flies down, meets Mary Eldridge. Sure. Christine Page and takes the sport back to Germany. And now, with his help and help of many others, Europe is blowing up with shuffleboard. How many countries do we have here? Zero. Are, the ISA currently has, I believe, eight member nations, of which, what do you call full member nations? In, uh, in one interim what is What does it mean to be a full member nation versus a... Once you apply for membership and you have four people attend an ISA event, then you become a voting member. Okay, got it. Uh, we have eight countries playing here today. Yeah. The Netherlands is represented by Juliana, but, but they're not a... a, a a full, a full member, member yet. So interesting, interesting story about Juliana, the, the Netherlands player, is that Jonathan and I brought out some neighbors from Margaritas when we were building the Royal Palms in Chicago just to kind of, you know, butter them up, make them feel good about the shuffleboard club coming to their neighborhood. And now she's playing other world championships. I spoke with her yesterday and I said, this is a far cry from Margaritas, a big star. So many shuffleboard stories start with a dream. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably true, especially at the Royal Pops. You know, on that note, I've been involved with, I think this is my 19th wow. ISA event. And I played a one, but I enjoy the camaraderie afterwards when everybody at the hotel gathers at the lounge has a coke has a beer has a wine yeah and we share stories and maybe the languages aren't that easy to understand but there's a 
bond that just that friendship that just makes that even maybe more fun than the game itself as a part of the international shuffleboard tournament. And, and we often say that there's there's a lot of skill in shuffleboard and one of the skills is giving good bench, you know, sort of being someone who you like to play with. It's, it's a very pleasant game and, you know, uh, very supportive, especially the ISA tournaments. Um, it's a lot about sort of international friendship and camaraderie in a way that some of the other tournaments aren't. Okay, let's see where we're at here. We're checking the drift and Doris is finding out that on that right side, her, her the black side, it moves to the left a lot more. So she's putting that in her brain. Again, in some tournaments you're allowed to chart, which means you can write it down and keep it in your pocket and use that. But in the ISA, they do not allow charting. Well, so many people are coming from so many different countries, they don't have time. Many really flew in just last night. Yeah. Okay. No score. No score. Holding steady. And Pam is happy for that. Oh, we missed we missed Allen and Torben. <laughs> uh, let's see. It looks like Torben scored again, 36 to 53. Allen's got to catch it up. Still can. Not impossible, especially on his home courts. But Allen is also, you know, such a big part of even planning this event that it's hard to probably get out of planning mode and into playing mode when you've been working so hard to get here. I agree. I saw him work in the opening ceremonies, which was a beautiful ceremony um, prior to this first match. Yeah. And he's just everywhere. He just, he's doing everything. And that's hard. That's not, you know, it's uh, you have to be really focused. I asked you earlier because you know Doris is so nice. Pam also very nice, but she's no nonsense. And I asked you about Torben. I said, is he a nice guy to play with? And you said he's really focused, and sometimes that can be mistaken for unfriendliness, but that he's a super nice guy. Right. I've heard people say that before, you know, the XYZ player is not as friendly. I, and no, they're just focused. They're, they're interested yeah. in the game. Yeah. He's going to congratulate his opponent whether he wins or loses, and he'd be the first one to shake his hand if, if, he, uh, if he lost. Yeah. But while you're in it, you got to stay in it. I know that because I always lose focus. <laughs> I start out strong. That's a beautiful high 10 because it's going to be very difficult for Alan to stick and stay. He's going to still try to just get rid of it. He'll and be on the line. Uh, yeah. He's blocked it up pretty good. I would He's think got the Torben hammer. would want to block this side, maybe come yeah. in with a high eight if possible. But at the very least, give him a, you know, I mean, he can bump. He's got some bumps. Him. See what he did? Mm -hmm. So he's he playing percentages right now. He's right. got a lead. He's saying if you can make an incredible shot. Then go for it. Go for it. He's going to go in between instead of trying to bump. He thinks he can get there, and he cannot, unfortunately. And, and do you, do you think that was the right, right shot to make? No, I, think, I think so. He could have been much closer to that first block, which would have given him more room to score the eight. Yeah. Um, his other option, he had a lot of yellow up top. Yeah, that's what maybe, I would have done. Maybe go for the miracle shot and you bump something. Well, at this point in the game, I think you go for the miracle shots, right? Aren't you at this point? Well, you kind of got to. 17 points down. That's only two discs. Okay. And then you score a 10 and 8. Boom, you're right in it. So. Yeah. But all these thoughts are going through these players' minds. What we're talking about here, they're thinking the exact same thing. Do I play a clear at this point? I remember um, Pam Hill's husband, Phil, taught me that shuffleboard was really just like a chess match. It was really a big game of hide and seek. Phil loved to teach. Yeah. He loved to transfer his knowledge of the sport to new players. One of my all-time favorite players. No longer with us. And never was down. Always happy. Yeah. And an avid gardener. <laughs> Just a special guy. Played for the UK. Pam plays for UK now. She's played for three different countries. 
<laughs> yes. so, so much so that they now have a Pam Hill rule that once you play for one country, you got to stick with it. You can't switch teams. And it was nothing uh, that Pam did. In 2012, there was a Norwegian team event, which means you have four ladies and four men. And there was a, a, an illness, which can obviously occur sure. unexpectedly. Now, the other three have flown in all the way from Norway, and they allowed uh, Pam to substitute, ah. so they had four. That, that's oh, that's how she played the one match. <laughs> For Norway. <laughs> now, she is uh, lives part-time in Canada. Right. And she and Phil had a, a home up in Canada, so obviously she represented for years. And then, then later on, when the UK Shuffleboard Association was formed, she joined. She moved over. She moved over to the UK. Now, Alan has changed strategy, you notice. His first disc, he did not go for the St. Pete. He's got to get go on the board. Him. He's going to play the board. He's hoping that Torben will knock him out, but stiff. Right. And now and he, he doesn't make it. Man, I don't think he kitchen so out. You think he's just trying to put some kitchen bait out? He would try Is to put some idea? kitchen bait out. He'll do the same thing here. It's just like, come and get me. If you notice, he's trying to go into the seven, mm -hmm. where if Torben does stick, it's an easier kitchen. Right. If he tries to do a high eight, that's a harder shot. Yeah, you could give him seven. Good roll. A lot could go wrong, or right. He's just going to try to clear, but... Oh. That's exactly yeah. what Alan was hoping for. Yeah, he has one thought on his mind, only one. Just kitchen? Kitchen. And not score, you think just kitchen at this point? Well, match. he may try to roll yeah, That's what I was side. thinking. But, but he's really got to take a look at the speed right. I don't know if he's got it. No. He did get a high eight. I believe that's good. Doris is going to check it. And notice how she does it from this side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you always look over the top of the disc because it might look like it's uh, on the line or not on the line based on the bevel. But if you look at it from the top, you can tell. And if it's even remotely, just the tiniest smidge on the white, it does not count. And in this case, Torben, obviously he wants to clear that off. Yep. He wants to put enough pace on it. Uh, he, Torben would have loved that yellow disc to hit the black. I know, I know. So he's still got a shot here. Torben's got the hammer, but Alan's going to try to roll it and try to score. I think at this point he's got to get a kitchen and score in order to really feel like he's got a comfortable uh, beat on a win here. But at least one of the other. I would think the kitchen is the play. So he tried it last time and it was the wrong speed. Does he get it this time? <gasps> oh, that, you hate to see that. That was that not is rough. what Alan intended. <laughs> no, boy was it not what he intended. Not only did he not kitchen Torben, he put himself in the kitchen and not him Gave Torben an eight. Uh, that is a 17-point swing. Devastating. And Torben's still got the hammer. He can really do some more damage on the way out. And he will hammer that nail in the coffin. Wow. Beautiful shot. Really rough stuff. Okay. We're, We're back to the 11th Pam. frame. Yeah. Doris is in the in the black now. We got 37 to 14. Can she catch up? You know, 23. In your mind, we you saw one frame that had 23. Right. So, you, so in your she's mind, got it. You're thinking I'm there. Yeah. You have to be positive. Yeah. And she's so positive. I feel like if anybody's going to. That was one gonna... frame. She's got five frames left. Okay. Let's see if she turns it on. She has. Oh, this is too She has six frames left. All right, let's do a couple more shout outs real quick. I'm gonna do one ah, from James Gallagher. The Gallaghers wish all the competitors good luck, especially those from our home club, Royal Palm Chicago. Shuffle Me Biscuits may still push and giggle, but Tuesday's B team is coming for you on Mondays. Oh, that's some trash talk from James Gallagher in Chicago. Trash talking, using that $100 well. 
the younger players have really introduced trash talking to <laughs> shuffleboard. <laughs> and I have to say, it's been an asset. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Well, you know, this time, uh, remarkably, we have 11 players from Royal Palms Chicago, seven players from Royal Palms Brooklyn, the most we've ever had play in a, an ISA. Oh, Pam's in the kitchen. Okay, here's an opening for Doris. Doris is just building, we call it a Pink Floyd. <laughs> oh yeah, what's that? She's building the wall. <laughs> she is not gonna let her score Got it. She she just, the, oh. now, she did not want to do no, that. No, she didn't. She just no. cleared it wide she open just for took Pam a brick to out of the wall. get in there. Yeah. Pam's going for the dark side of the moon. Huh? Okay, right still oh clear. I was Earlier lucky. we talked about how when you try to knock your own out of the kitchen, you can stay. That's yeah. exactly what happened. It is, but she didn't luckily she she landed on the line. Oh, Doris went for the eight and did not get there. No, I believe Pam is still in the kitchen, they said. No, I thought they said it was a no oh. score. No score. Got lucky. Oh, favorable for, for Pam, yeah. So now we're going to the 12th frame. Again, we play 16 frames in the ISA, eight on each color. Um, I'll go for another shout out while we're waiting. Good time. Derek Falk and Emily Ellsworth, also from Royal Palms, Chicago, say words of wisdom from the Wu-Tang Clan, that's their league team. If you live through defeat, you're not defeated. If you are beaten but acquire wisdom, you have won. Lose yourself to improve yourself. With love, Derek and Emily. By the way, Derek and Emily met at the Royal Palms. Emily worked at the Royal Palms. Derek was a league member. Now they are in love and playing shuffleboard around the world or at least around the country. So not only can you enjoy the sport, but you might meet your future partner. Yeah, it's a very flirty game. You know, you're playing across from your partner and next to your opponent. Uh, the words of wisdom that I read, that you just read out. Yeah. They're so true about shuffleboard, but most anything in life, those are good words. Yeah. Just learn from learn from what you've made learn a mistake from about. Defeat. Yeah, I'm not defeated. That that works for a multitude of sins. <laughs> I saw something recently that said, try to think of something that happens for you, not happens to you. And I, I really like, like that. Yeah. I like it. Here we are. Alan's got the hammer. He knows he has got the score. It's it's now or never. And he gets there, no, on the line. And it's never. It's <laughs> oh, really? Is it never? I guess so. 26 to 67. Not looking great for Allen. Again, first match of the entire tournament. We are going to be here all week long. How many games do they play? Do you know? They play eight. The men are there's 64 men. Right. Eight groups of eight. Okay. So you play everybody in your group. So that would be seven matches. Okay. After those seven matches, the top two go on to the knockout round for a 1 3 16, and then 3 and 4. You know. So even if you came in second in your group, you could still wind up in the finals. Right. And you know, then it's become, anybody's game. So just you get yourself to the finals. Your you're not always. Pam missed, gave Doris an opening, and she take it. She's got to really come up here. She's going to block. And it's score. really been a tale of two halves for them. Pam dominated the first half, mm -hmm. but Doris has dominated the last five or six frames. Yeah, and they say, you know, sometimes there's an easier side of the court, and maybe it's just a black court. She's going to try to do the same thing again. She wants to protect that good eight. Yep. That's a really good. It's a nice block. And does she want to protect it? Is it better to be on the line there as opposed to being in the tent? Well, the fact that this court drifts heavily right to left, she wants to err on the side of the right. Mm. Now, Pam has the hammer. Doris is going to now, what do you think, put up a score here? Oh, she's going to keep blocking. She's just going to keep blocking. She just wants to keep that eight. She's still got time, slow and steady. Pam's got to make a decision. A lot of people say, well, now right? Pam can easily score the left. It's not right. that given, as we saw with Alex. Yeah. So she's got to get in there. And 
she does. That's a smart play. Oh, um, back to the producers. We've got Beachside Social, which is a shuffleboard club in Virginia, I think. Virginia, Virginia Beach. Uh, I, think they I, were, I think they were Royal Palms League members. First. That's exciting. I think so. Is it the pink one? Is it the one that's pink? It, one that has it looks like a, uh, a cruise ship. Oh. They even did a, a clever, the windows, it's on the second floor of a building. Uh huh. The, second, the, the windows were made into portals. Oh, so it feels like, oh, that's. You feel cute. like you're on a cruise yeah. ship. Yeah, I like and, that. And uh, you're going for that cruise ship vibe, but. Sure. Uh, they have turned into. A very, from a rec similar to a park, from a recreational facility uh -huh. to a, they have a lot of leagues. Really? A lot of league play up there. Yeah. I mean, it's a, a really great way to make friends. Like I said, Derek and Emily met, but there have been babies and businesses and best friends. We get notes all the time from people who say, you have changed my life. I, I have a whole group of friends that I'll have for the rest of my life. And Virginia Beach is not a bad place to go visit. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful area. <laughs> you go on official shuffleboard business. We, we probably should get down there and see. Absolutely. <laughs> I guess it's up there. Oh. Alan's just going to try to play aggressively now, but he could be on tilt just trying to get get in there. Four frames to go. Each has a hammer. Each has two hammers. Torben isn't even going to risk it. He's so far up. And that's the wise move. Yeah. People think that's unsportsmanlike. No, that's a strategy. Yeah. Don't give him anything to move. hit. Don't give him anything to, to make a mistake on. The thing that's hard here is to not give up on yourself, right? To not write it off. Play till the end. Now will Torben just go for the jugular and try to kitchen this? You know, I think his mindset is use it as a backdrop. If I if it, he came up short, but if he had hit a little too long, at least he could use that to stick to stay in the and seven. make it seven. Yeah. So and, he, and, uh, he, and he made a seven anyway. It's just an, an insurance disc. Okay. 44 to 22. Doris has the hammer. Okay. Pam, that's an interesting move by Pam. What do you think she's trying to do there? Oh. That was a nice try. Doris is looking at kitchen. Pam is licking her chops thinking that she can get use that disc, but again, the court going right to left, it, it makes it more challenging. Oh, she's still in there. It's hard to, it's hard to say how good a shot that was. <laughs> it's hard to say because it was, I it, mean, it's hard to express how good it was because yeah, it was such a good shot. because it's a to score. Now, it does oh. give Doris, Doris a an chance. Does she get there? Oh, no. Okay, she gets that. She gets the disc out. That's one. If they had one less coat of paint, she doesn't hit it. At all, really. She went just back there. Okay, Pam's gonna try it again. This time. <gasps> oh, now she that. scores and puts herself in the kitchen. Now, gonna be hard for Doris to. Oh, she's just gonna bump herself. Doris wants to score that ten. Oh, uh, not quite. But Pam's going to try to get herself out of she the kitchen wants out of that kitchen, but we've seen it. It's not always a given. No. Nope. Oh, but she might also she's score an eight. Just to score. Oh, 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 oh. <gasps> oh, no. One in the kitchen, one okay. seven. Okay. I thought that was double soup over there. I, I did, too, but it wound up being okay. a she's Right now, she's minus three. Right, and so we've got to get Doris. Oh, doesn't make it. Doesn't make it. So Pam gave her a little leg up, but Doris couldn't couldn't capitalize on it. Still, 41-22 is not, you know, we still got some time. Do we have some time? Get three frames to go, <laughs> 19 points. Okay. As a player, you're thinking, that's three discs. Yeah, I can get there. Three tens. 
but it, it's four discs. So you're thinking, I need to win one disc next round. Maybe on my hammer, get two. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe Kitchener. And do you think that you're thinking that far ahead? I'm just thinking about frame by frame. These players are thinking that far ahead. Torben, at this stage, is not going to leave any disc on the board. Right. Alan Although is, he did. Leave. Alan's going to have to well, right, <laughs> right. Okay. Alan wants to kitchen, kitchen, yep. kitchen. And now will Torben just clear his own disc at that point, just to kind of like not give him any chance for kitcheneing? Is that, that the or, idea? Either that or, or put one in front of it as a block. And that's what he's going to do. Yeah. Which is risky at this point because if you give him a chance, if you're if you're on the board, there's room for error. Right. Sometimes Which is why you, he pushes through. Sometimes you before. think you present, do I, if I take my own off, maybe I stick that disc. Oh. Alan's in that mode just where nothing's going right. Yeah. I mean, he could make the same shot again, maybe, and replace Torben's disc, but Torben's not going to let him. Torben is playing a very defensive game and yep. with a 74 to 26 advantage. So does, I can't does Alan just, just try to score here and maybe try to use his yellow disc to stop himself in the 10? I think Alan. I mean, Alan, rather. He's down so far that he's going to try the miracle shot. Yeah. The one percent shot. Of kitchening. Yeah. Kitchening? Really? Okay, let's see it. Could use a miracle right now. Okay. Well, he's on a good path. <gasps> oh no. Okay. Well, at least he, he kept him from scoring. And Torben is quite happy with a, a sure. nil nil result. Sure. Sometimes I just like to play 0 0 the whole time, lull my opponent into just uh, stupefaction. They just don't even, they're not paying attention anymore. And then at the last minute, I score one score, I win by seven. And that could be a strategy because some people get frustrated with a clear, clear, clear score game. Yeah. And you can take them out of their yeah. cover zone. And it's so much, it's a mental game in so many ways. So now we're in the 14th frame. Ladies have three. Pam's coming hard. She is three just going to, she's going to clear now. She is not going to give Doris a chance to catch up. Pam she can help it. She has two of the three hammers. Right. That's Which a is big such advantage. an advantage. Yeah. Okay. Doris still playing the board and not going on to score. She's not trying to take scores. She's still blocking. She's still playing strategy. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. oh, no. That's the one where you go, stop, 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 go, go, go. <laughs> oh, Doris just doesn't have the touch today. That is an incredible shot. Wow, wow. And those are the shots champions make. Yeah. And Pam knows her champion. She was the curator of the Shuffleboard Hall of Fame for a long time there. OK. Doris getting in there, giving Pam some decisions to make. Does she try to kitchen her here? Does she try to knock her out? Does she try to score? I think you, you want to try to kitchen, but the, the, the worst you want to start you want your seven. To stay. Yeah. Oh, I think she could do both here. She did. Wow, brutal. Brutal. That is, that frame shows you the champion that Pam Hill is. Yeah. And I've seen her play in the finals twice, maybe more than that. I mean, she's, she is a winner. Internal. She's an internal winner. But you see, Doris and Pam chatting it up over there. They're still having a good time. And that's the beauty if, of shuffleboard. If memory serves me correct, Pam in 2013 did get to the finals. She was in the finals against Glenna, Glenna Earl. Earl. Mm -hmm. I saw that match. Glenna Earl Glenna is won. the answer to a trivia question. <laughs> who is the only person to ever win two, two cues. golden cues? Yeah. 
Glenna Earl, one of my favorites. Such a just cool and fun and kind. Just a true, true ambassador of shuffleboard. And that was a tough match for both of them. Could have gone either way. When we talk about the Golden Q, it is the award for the champion men's player and champion ladies player, which will be awarded Friday yes. at the awards bank. Last year we had Mats Graf from Norway won uh, two, years. two years ago. Two years ago at the single. So it, it alternates singles and, and group play. Last year the U.S. team won gold. Next the year, year before, it would be a, a team event yeah. in Texas. Yeah. But when it was singles, Mats Graf, Mats Graf from uh, Norway won, and Fabian Fluck from, from, Germany. from Germany, who was, it was her first tournament. She couldn't be here because she's in school. <laughs> she couldn't make it because she has to go to school. Um, but they'll be passing on the cue, or Mats is playing. He could keep, he could maintain his, uh, his crown. Mats could, could be back-to-back -back champion. He's a spectacular player. Okay. Ethan has one shot left. Mm. Just can't hit him today. Torben has a good seven and the hammer. Yeah, that's not gonna, that's no good. Or really good. Okay. I'll take that seven. That, what does that make the score now? It was 26-74. Turbin just took another seven. It's, uh, it's looking kind of bleak. And we're just at the end here. We've really got to. Anytime you're ahead by 40, uh, more than 40, if you just throw your disc off, you can't lose. Uh, so right. It's Turbin, only if you let them next put frame, he'll just throw, right. he'll just throw just them get them away. There's no reason for him to be on the board. However, George, on the other hand, wants to be on the board. Right, she wants to get on that there. Miracle frame. Um, she needs that DNA frame. And you know, like I said before, the ISA is a really friendly, friendly tournament. You're not really supposed to run up the score too high. You know, if you're winning, you can win, but you don't need to show off. Now look at that shot by Pam. Wow, talk about showing off. Okay. Doris is going to try to get in there. She's just going to try to take it, huh? She's going hard. Oh, just misses it. And this is a, has been a, a case of Doris hasn't played poorly. Pam has just made just beautiful shots. shot after shot after shot. And she sees that Doris has a chance. And she's yeah, she's going to block it. Oh. block it. Yeah. Doris isn't going to bother over there. She's going to come back around the other side. She knows she's got to put some points up. Try Maybe to try to double. Yeah. To hit that one out. At least score, which she did. Scores 56-12. I guess that hits the 40-point mark here. And I'm still going for it. Oh. <gasps> Almost put herself in the kitchen there. Doris has the hammer. What is she going to do here? Just score, try to score 10. Just score on the other side. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, just a little, a little too short. short. A little too short. Oh, that's kind of been. Yeah, you hate to see it. The last four or five uh, frames for her that has kind of been in the story. Yeah. But. But Pam making incredible shot after incredible That's shot. Crazy. Yeah. It's demoralizing all it's of a sudden. <laughs> no matter how good a player you are. At okay. 81 to 26, Ooh. Torben has. They've both been up the whole time. Pam and Torben have never been down. They came out dominating and they. I'm going to do a shout out to the Canadian National Shuffleboard Association. Even though we don't have a player from the CNSA on this court, 
all the other courts, there's a lot of players coming from the CNSA. From Canada, yeah. And they're going to say congratulations to the Ontario men's EH team. Mm. Roy Babcock, Murray Burnett, Garrett Degman, Evan Engel, and the Manitoba women's purple team, Noreen Coates, Eileen Hildebrandt, Carol Clem, Gina Basilian from the Canadian National Shuffle Association for winning this year's Canadian Championship in Winnipeg. Wow. If you have what it takes to become the next Canadian National Team Champion, join us in Blenheim, Ontario, June 2025. Wow, that is an open invitation if you have what it takes. Do you have to be Canadian to play in that tournament? Was that a message directly to the Canadians or can anyone go and play in that tournament? I believe you have to be in the CNSA, but I am not positive. Okay, well, if you think you have what it takes, look up the rules, I, I guess, on that with, one. I would get with Norm Lindsay, CNSA president. Find out if you could become a citizen in time. <laughs> okay. Well, the first match is in the books. Torben Hoosman from Germany has defeated Alan Rosetti from the USA. Now, ordinarily, if it was a team event, that win would go towards Germany's total count, yes. towards a medal. But in this instance, it's Torben against Torben. He is playing for himself, representing Watch Germany. Out. This is, yeah, this is a single event. Doris still trying to get out there, representing the US, and now and permanently on the UK team. Pay, pay nice. yeah. Is that what I said? I think that's what I said. I don't know. Who even knows? Okay, she's just going to keep doors off. Call it a day. Just trying to make some last minute fancy shots. Why wouldn't you? You know, and you're also thinking you've got other matches. Yeah. You want to keep your stroke, you want to keep the speed going. Yeah. It's a little bit like practice now, but that could be very important. She's just trying to catch in anything that's on the board. Pam knows that. She doesn't need the points, but she's getting in there. Okay. Be nice to end on a kitchen here for Doris if she can make it. Up, up, up. And that's nope. just kind of how her day went. That's a ball game, or the biscuit game. Again, first match of many this week. Both of these players, all four of these players, will be hearing more from them, I'm sure. Pam just shoots her disc down the court because she knows she has won. Yeah, big hugs all around. Another that, beautiful thing about shuffleboard, you're always happy for your opponent. And that's, that is so much of the ISA, where you, know, you have a Germany and USA men over there congratulating, hugging each other. Yeah. Canadian, USA ladies sharing a good time. And rooting for each other, you know, along the way. Even if you hadn't met before, one of the beauties, uh, beautiful things about shuffleboard is when you're standing next to your opponent, you really get a chance to talk to them, and then you know them. Then you've got friends all over the all over the field. One game, and you've got a friend for life. Okay, I think we're going to wrap it up here. I mean, we've seen some great shuffleboard so far. There's so much more shuffleboard to see. We're so happy you're here with us, and we will be back soon. Thanks for joining us.